Sternum basically provides attachments to a lot of significant muscles, specifically the chest, the diaphragm, and the uh, abdominal muscles as well. Now, all of these muscles, if you observe closely, they are a part of the breathing process and the expansion of the thoracic cage during inspiration. So the sternum is basically the core bone which supports the chest wall and it even helps in the process of respiration. Several muscles have attachments to the sternum. The anterior surface gives origin to pectoralis major on the lateral sides, starting from the manubrium, running down towards the body bilaterally. Sternal head of sternocleidomastoid gets attached just superior to the pectoralis major on the anterior aspect of manubrium sterni. Above it on the both sides is the attachment of the anterior sternoclavicular ligament. The xephoid would give attachments to the medial fibers of the rectus abdominis, which is the muscle giving you the six pack appearance after your long hours of workout. And the aponeurosis of the external and internal oblique muscles of the abdomen. This mnemonic would help you recall the muscular attachments anteriorly. Red Super Sword of Major. R stands for Rectus Abdominis. S stands for Sternocleidomastoid. Another S stands for Sternoclavicular. O stands for the Oblique Muscles and M is for the pectoralis major muscle. Coming to the posterior part, imagine a little alien hidden behind the sternum. These two little eyes on the posterior surface gives origin to the sternohyoid in the upper part, and these two arms are the origin of the sternothyroid in the lower part. Some of the relations that you have to remember include the arch of aorta, which is related to the lower half of the manubrium, the left brachiocephalic vein, the brachiocephalic artery, the left common carotid artery, and the left subclavian artery is related to the upper half. Posteriorly, we have also the attachments to the sternocostalis muscle, which is forming the legs and the tail of the alien previously discussed. The posterior surface of the xephoid gives attachment to the slips of the diaphragm. On the lateral aspects, in between the facets for articulation, there is attachment for the external and internal intercostal membranes. The aponeurosis of internal oblique attachments of transverse abdominis muscle takes place at the xephoid. The suprasternal notch gives attachment to the lower fibers of the interclavicular ligament and to the two subdivisions of the investing layer of the cervical fascia. Please remember that the clavicular notch gives attachment to the capsular ligaments of the sternoclavicular joint. So I hope it's a piece of cake now to recall the muscles on the body of the sternum that are the pectoralis major and sternocostalis. <laughs>